everyone. My name is Ming An Wu, and I come from Hanoi University of Mining and Geology. It is uh, very pleased to uh, introduce about my study in tunneling in subsoils. And today, I would like to introduce about the blowout in tunneling. And um, I want also to uh, present a case study of the blowout in Ho Chi Minh City when we carry out uh, a metro line one. About the content of my presentation, there are seven parts uh, in my presentation. The first one I will uh, introduce about the um, reason of my study uh, and the comparison between the deep tunnels and the shallow tunnel, the reason of um, uh, study on shallow tunneling and uh, some um, ph phenomenon of uh, accident could happen when we carry out the shallow tunneling. Uh, the next part I will introduce about the uh, blowout uh, occurrence in tunneling. And um, the next I will introduce about some models uh, which are popular in uh, tunneling design in the world and um, about uh, my, my research on uh, blowout and my models to analyze the blowout of the shallow tunnels in subsoil. As the next part, I will um, uh, have some comparison of uh, the result analysis from the models and uh, some and with the uh, observed data from experiments, which is which was um, carried out in uh, Dell University uh, of Technologies. And the next part, uh, it is uh, the comparison with uh, the validation uh, of uh, two case study of case study, uh, which have um, blowout occurrence in the in the past and um, the, the, the sixth part about the blowout of um, Ho Chi Minh City uh, metro line one um, which which will uh, happen last year and the final part is about the conclusions uh, when we designed a tunnel alignment in in the city or urban areas, it is uh, often to choose the solution for the deep tunnel, which is often located uh, at the depth of from 10, 20 meters below um, be, below the surface to uh, about 30 meters or 40 meters. Um, this will reach to um, the high construction, high cost of construction, and uh, because we will, con we have to construct uh, the deep station, and so we uh, have um, to 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 to, uh, to build the, um, the the operation system to uh, travel people from um, the surface to the platform. So why we, we have to do to design with this depth because um, if we uh, because when we put the, the tunnel at, at, at that location or the, that the depth uh, we will minimize the effect on the uh, existing building on the surface and also the foundation system and um, it is it is the, the safety region, um, so it's, it's, it, it raises the question: What happened when we do the shallow tunnels with the shallow uh, overburden above the tunnel? Um, 
in fact we see is when if we can do the shallow tunnels we can uh, reduce the construction cost cost from the um, the uh, cost from the construction cost of uh, a smaller station and uh, also the uh, the time and the the um, the capacity of um, of the machine uh, big, uh, construction machine because um, if we use shallow with shallow tunnel we we it will be quite uh, uh, lower capacity of uh, pump or um, uh, salary uh, system or and so on and and uh, for the operational uh, state uh, so the cost of operation uh, will also reduce because um, it will save the time for um, traveling from the surface uh, for the road to to the platform that uh, we can um, catch just uh, the train station or the metro system and so um, with my study on uh, on on the solo tunneling in the past uh, the effect of the um, of the, uh, the effect of the tunneling work when depends on 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 soil parameter and also the position of the the tunnels and uh, actually uh, when we when when we did uh, the research on uh, on the shallow tunneling in subsoil um, when we move the the location of the tunnel uh, to close to the surface the uh, the scope of the influence zone will uh, may reduce. And now, uh, one of the most important topics when we uh, tunneling with the shallow um, overburden is the stability. And this my this presentation it will focus on the stability when we do the shallow tunneling in subsoil. As you know, when we uh, tunnel in the soil, we have to use uh, the, um, the fluid or the bentonite at the tunneling phase and show the tail voice. And it is very important if we can estimate the, um, the value or the suitable uh, pressure when we apply on the tunneling phase. Um, there are two um, two kind of accidents when we uh, tunnel uh, in the soil. The first one is about the uh, the the lower variation of the um, uh, Stability. Um, when we use uh, the the low pressure at the tunneling phase, uh, the soil uh, ahead of the tunneling phase uh, can move to the cham excavation chamber, and it will lead to the, the settlement on the on the surface. It is often used for estimate the minimum support pressure. In fact, you can see uh, many um, um, methods to calculate the minimum support pressure by the uh, analytical methods or the um, uh, simulation or numerical methods or some. Uh, semi-empirical method or empirical methods and here we um, often use the wet models uh, which, which was um, presented by uh, the Hong from uh, 1961 and then it's, uh, it was uh, developed by many uh, uh, authors or the researchers in over the world like um, Anna Gusto and Kovari from in 1994, um, uh, Brewer in 2001, and so on. 
and actually in fact we uh, when when we design the tunnel uh, when we design for the tunnel when um, for the subsoil condition we often use the wet model here to estimate the, the minimum spot pressure and the blowout and the other phenomenon is the blowout blowout is a phenomenon that present um, the accident when we use the, um, the high pressure as a turning uh, turning phase too much high pressure and um, uh, the the soil above the tunnel will be pushed upward and the fluid will be uh, flow out and the unstability of the tunneling phase will happen and then it's green and when the support pressure here disappear uh, the soil you can move to the uh, excavation chamber and you can create um, the damage of the soil for blood and also the assisting building it is clear when you see in this speaker the support pressure here is about the support pressure using apply at the turning phase and here we often use the support pressure uh, as a tail voice and here is a change of the support pressure along the seal and uh, actually the blowout will happen in uh, second hand knot in the 1990s and uh, when when they uh, built the Rotterdam uh, port, the, the tunnel at the in, in at the port Rotterdam, and here the blow the blowout happened at this position under the uh, Old Mills uh, River, and it's uh, about twenty meter from the water level. And uh, we will use this um, uh, case study to uh, verify it, the, um, uh, the blower models data. Uh, for the calculation of the blowout pressure, uh, there are some models, blower models using Unzuzu's work. It is a model presented by Professor Bantros, 1991. It is uh, calculate the blowout based on the stability of the soil volume above the tunnel. And um, when they calculate the safety index as the equation here, it can estimate the support pressure, the Z, S, Z, T, um, that we use at the location of the tunnel Z, T from the uh, safety index. And this uh, slide which shows the blower models that often used in practical design for the uh, tunneling in subsoil. It is the 2D uh, models. Uh, it's based on the equilibrium of the soil volume above the tunnel. And um, this uh, equation estimate uh, the maximum support pressure should be used in the training phase based on the shear force, two shear force and the, the weight of the soil volume above the tunnel and uh, it should be equal to the um, total support pressure here and then uh, based on this equilibrium condition we can estimate the maximum support pressure Uh, and uh, 
uh, development for uh, from the brewer models uh, for the blowout calculation uh, is uh, present in this slide. And this and this model we I I concluded from uh, uh, for for two parts. The first part is the upper part of the um, of the tunnel, and um, is it is often uh, estimated for uh, uh, for the case when we uh, of the tunneling phase when we calculate the equilibrium based on the equilibrium of the shear force and the width of the shelf above the tunnel and um, and the support pressures. Um, that uh, uh, along the the section uh, of the of the tunnels, and uh, is 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 equal is include the change of the uh, the support pressure here, with the uh, in the delta P is uh, here is the gradient uh, of the support pressure, and. Um, we also calculate for the lower part of the support pressure that uh, include uh, uh, the weight of the, the, the tunnel section. And uh, here it is uh, equilibrium for uh, the support pressure often used as the low, lower part when um, for, for the um, uh, limitation uh, calculation when we um, use support pressure here around the tunnel section and uh, for the condition that uh, if uh, the support pressure uh, with too much that we um, push upward on the uh, tunnel section here and also the soil above the tunnel section and the equilibrium includes the shear force, two shear force, and uh, the weight of the soil above the tunnel, and also the weight of the tunnel. And from these this two conditions, we can estimate the ST mass as this equation is the maximum support pressure at the top of the tunnel, and the SB mass for the minimum support a maximum support pressure that could be used at the lower uh, um, the the lowest point of the tunnel section, as in this question, uh, in this equation. And in my study on the blowout it happened in the solo tunneling in subsoil, we. Uh, we validate with uh, the experiment uh, that were carried out by um, Professor Ben Shawen and um, Brashinga from 2006. Um, uh, this uh, experiment was carried out in the laboratory of the geotechnical department in Tudelf. And uh, this figure shows the model of of the uh, experiments, uh, as you can see. And here we uh, we saw the validation with uh, three centrifuge tests. Uh, and um, we also calculate uh, comparison with uh, the, with the um, model uh calculation model from um, Brewer 2001 and Bartos 1991 as I presented um, earlier and also my uh, the calculation of my model and for the first uh, centrifuge test with the C to D around um, 1.5 and uh, they carry out the um, carry out the, the tunneling and they change the support pressure at the tunneling phase and they they um, can um, estimate the blowout pressure uh, at, at, uh, 
that this uh, experiment is is about um, 500 um, kilonewton per met per square meters. And here is um, the maximum support pressure that calculated by Bartos in 1991. And here, this slide is to uh, describe the calculation from the poor 2001 models. And um, here is uh, calculated from the, um, the, the models, my model about when apply the bottom part and um, the, my model about the, um, the pressure that can collect for the top part. And here you can see the, um, the blowout sub, uh, support pressure in the first uh, centrifugal test is um, at the middle of, uh, of the model, of my model. And uh, it's always a good result. And here for the second centrifugal test, we also apply with uh, the case of uh, C2D nearly about two. And um, this is the line calculated from the uh, Bartos to 1991 uh, models, the 3D models, and the 2D model from Brewer 2001 is uh, at the lowest uh, line. And here, we can see uh, the, the model of um, the bottom part can um, calculate um, better results close to the um, observed data uh, from the centrifugal test. And uh, the top is much better than the blowout uh, model from uh, Bartos and Brewer. And also the, 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 the third centrifugal test here, you also see is for the case study of the C2D2, and they, uh, they observe that, that the blowout pressure is about 250 kilonewton per square meter. And uh, as you can, you can see here, the maximum support pressure estimate from the um, the lower part model uh, can um, yeah, calculate very close to the observed data. And in my um, study on the blowout uh, happened when solo tunneling, we also uh, validate with uh, uh, the case study that I uh, indicated before. Uh, the case study of uh, when we uh, uh, when they tunnel, the second hand not tunnel in Rotterdam. And uh, yeah, and this is uh, the location of the blowout happen uh, under the Pleistocene place, place layers and under uh, 11 meter of the water. And uh, this is uh, the face pressure that uh, they uh, uh, observe when in the tunneling process, and they uh, and it is the value of the phase pressure when the blowout happen. We also did uh, the calculation from uh, um, four models for this case study, and you can see. Uh, the cycle point is about the um, blowout pressure at the tunnel top that they measure, and the star is about the blowout pressure at the tunnel center when they observe at the in the tunneling process, and this is so carried out with the battles uh, models. Yeah, and in this case, we can see the the battle model is might have a good result, and the, it is the uh, Brewer models. It has a conservative result, and the my and the new model from the it is about the the model from the top part. Yeah, the point is on the line, 
So it's, it's, it has a very good result. When we validate with the um, case study of the second hand knob tunnel, and so far, so far the for the tunnel center is might be um, close to the uh, maximum support pressure from the bottom part. Yeah, the bottom part is higher, so maybe in the meter. Yeah, to to use model blower model can predict very good for the blower model that happen in the second hand node tunnel. Um, and in this presentation, we also um, uh, introduce about the, um, the blowout case study in uh, Metro Line 1 in Ho Chi Minh City that will happen in the last year, 2019, when we um, tunnel uh, the, the, the first Metro Light in Ho Chi Minh City in Vietnam. Um, this is about the overview on the Ho Chi Minh City Metro Line 1. It is um, uh, uh, from the main tank station. And it's, it, we go to the, the center of the Ho Chi Minh City um, with about the four, 14 uh, station. And you go to the um, uh, Lumbing Depot. It is uh, close to the Swedian uh, Park. And uh, this is um, the first one uh the first metro light in vietnam and uh we 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 should uh, we have um, uh, a lot of um, effort uh, of effort to um uh, to study uh, what happened when uh, occur in the turning process to uh, have some lesson and experiment to carry out and about 15 other uh, metro lights in Vietnam, both for Ho Chi Minh City, about seven metro lights. And in Hanoi, we will have about um, eight metro lights in the future. And this is the location that uh, happens, uh, may, uh, the, the blowout is about the um, uh, genesis of uh, Kilometer one plus uh, five hundred meter, and it's close to the Ngo Văn Nam Street, yeah. and the waterfront of Saigon. It's, it is uh, very crowded area in uh, Ho Chi Minh City. And here you can see this is a picture for the. Uh, at the at the moment that blowout happened, the fluid is pushed upward and flow out, and uh, we can see the fluid float on the on the street. It has uh, the yellow um, the yellow color, so it's maybe the polymer fluid we use as a turning phase, and of course when it everything stop and it keep try to keep the stability of surrounding soil of the TBM and um, yeah and we have to fix the problem before continue continuing uh, to tunneling process in this picture picture you can see the uh, clearer fluid of the blow of the polymer using at the uh, turning face was pumped out and um, float on the road when blowout happened. Yep, and here we can see if the value of the the pressure. Uh, that uh, uh, that use when the blowout happen is about um, uh, from um, uh, yeah zero point thirty six MPa and uh, at the additive uh, and there's a number two and another is um, 
0 0.31 MPI. So we, um, we use the, this value for validate the case study of the blowout in Ho Chi Minh City. Uh, this figure shows the, um, the geo condition of the location that blowout happened. And uh, it is uh, at the chinese of kilometer one plus 500 meter. And uh, the location of the um, uh, tunnel alignment is uh, about more than 10 meter below the surface. And uh, it is the soil parameter at the location of the blowout happen. Uh, it's including the field layers and also the aluminum clay layer two and aluminum clay layer one. Yep. And um, for analysis, the uh, blowout happened in uh, this case study of Ho Chi Minh's metro line one. We, uh, we use uh, multi-layer models. We also calculate for the upper part of the tunnel, as you can see in this figure. And also the lower part of the tunnel, and you can see very quicker, the upper part, uh, yeah, there are four layers. As you can see in uh, the previous slide of the soil condition. Yeah, and here is the result when you can calculate with the, um, um, with the, the model that we calculate, uh, that I presented before, the lower part model and the upper part model. And it is the object data is about, uh, uh, yeah, uh, 381 kilopascal, and uh, it is the result from uh, the maximum support pressure at the top part. And for the second support pressure for calculate for the tunnel center, and it is to calculate for the top the part, and it is only about um, uh, it percent of the difference between the observed data and the uh, result analysis from this model. So it's a good result. It means that uh, this model can predict a good, um, but is um, precise the blowout model, um, blowout support pressure that uh, could be happen uh, in the uh, project. Uh, the final part of my uh, Presentation is a conclusion. Uh, yeah, you can see uh, the blowout condition is very important in uh, tunneling design, especially when we tunnel in subsoil condition under the very, under the city, under the, a lot of um, important buildings, historical buildings, and um, dense area in the city. Um, and if, if we consider this condition, we can prevent the damage on the tunneling process also for the existing buildings. And in this presentation, the yeah, blower models in over the world has been reviewed and compared to the um, experiment result. Um, yeah, in detail in uh, three um, scientific tests. And of course, for the case study of second hand knot in uh, Rotterdam uh, in the Netherlands. And um, in this presentation, I also um, present about the case study of uh, blowout in uh, Metro Line 1 in Ho Chi Minh City. And the validation with the um, observed data uh, shows a good agreement between the um, linear support pressure blowout models proposed by um, uh, by me from 2015 uh, and uh, the observed data. And um, the, the solution that uh, used in the Ho Chi Minh City Metro Line 1 tunneling process so that um, the, when they uh, prepare a very carefully um, solution for all the uh, risks of, you know, when we tunneling, is very important and uh, it's really this time a successful tunneling project. Um, uh, 
for the final, in the final, I would like to send a very thank you for the uh, hearing my presentation. And also uh, thank you for uh, the organization from the Institute of Engineer Malaysia, the support from the ITA young member from Asia. Thank you very much.